Well, we all know the story about the woman at the well. Get Jesus a drink and then a whole lot of people tell him, he said. The Holy Gospel according to John, the fourth chapter. So Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Resting on the wrong side of the track, the bad part of town, a gay couple wandering into Westboro Baptist, into Fred Phelps' funeral, a Ukrainian soldier off base in Crimea when the gates smashed open. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. When Nicodemus had showed up to meet with Jesus, it was night. In the darkness was unbelief. Not now. Now in the noonday sun, all is visible. All is known. Here comes belief. A Samaritan woman came to draw water. A Samaritan woman, no name. Nicodemus had a name. She does not. Nameless, just some other person. And Jesus said to her, give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. When a parent wept, wants to get something done, but the kids are there, they might be in the way. So daddy gives them busy work. Dig a hole, count the leaves on the trees, fill a hole. Jesus says, oh, could you all go and get some food? So the disciples won't get in the way in the way of this woman, this woman's important experience of Jesus. The Samaritan woman said, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a Samaritan woman? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. She's unnamed, but she's a woman. She's a Samaritan the wrong gender, the wrong religion for Jesus. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Living water. The rabbis recommend it for ritual baths. The early church fathers recommend it for baptism. Water that flows, fresh and clean, bubbling, clear and living, from God's good earth. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I give them will never be thirsty. The water that I give will come to them, a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. Think of it. To be filled, filled up with a life flowing, flowing from the goodness of what God creates, fresh and clean, a living, clear, bubbling life, flowing from purity and in the likeness of our baptism. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. She just wants a small, simple thing. One less backbreaking job. No more going to draw water in the heat of the day. That's all. Slaking of thirst and less monot monotony. A small thing. But he's offering more. He's offering a big thing. 
Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband, and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. Five husbands. Some assume adultery, but my bet is abandonment. Maybe because of barrenness, left again and again and again and again. Left to fend for herself, to carry her own water, to grow hard, abandoned. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Peter doesn't even top this one. <coughs> Nicodemus, likewise, is blind. But she sees. Sees Jesus in the noon light, both of them, exposed for who they are. He names her, and she names him. And they see there by Jacob's well. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and is now here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. You're a prophet, but not of my religion. So... Brass tax thing. The place between you and me, the space between Gerizim and Jerusalem, Mount Zion. What is it? What is that space? You say there is no space? It's not about place? Huh. The woman said to him, I know the Messiah is coming, who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. He doesn't say, I am he. English communicates this poorly. He says, I am. I am. When Moses spake with the burning bush, the bush said, I am. When Moses spoke, and likewise, when others spoke, they heard, I am, with a period at the end. No genealogy but Genesis instead. The origin, the formation of it all, it all flows from this. He says, I am. Just then, his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman. But no one said, what do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? These awkward, unspoken question marks would be shepherd's crooks. Removing this bad comedian from the stage, removing this woman from the Lord's presence. This is why Jesus came up with this task. This is why he said, Oh, could you go and get us some food? Because these disciples, they see a woman. They see a Samaritan. The disciples get in the way of Jesus. Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. 
She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah. Can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Her question mark is a shepherd's crook too. One leading her people like Moses with a staff, Miriam's song at the river. She had found the one who fills her water jar, fills it forever. She had seen one who saw her, knew her name, and saw her in the noon sun. She saw him. Come and see. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to complete his work. Sometimes the disciples don't see. Even in the noon sun, they don't see. Do you not say, four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe with harvest, ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I send you to reap that which you did not labor for. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor also. She sowed. She sowed with her words, sowed in the noon sun, sowed because of who she saw. They did not labor, those disciples, but they will reap because she sowed there in the noon sun. Many Samaritans from the city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. They came to see in the noon sun, bright with belief, these Samaritans stayed with the Savior, seeing him, because she sowed and said and suggested and saw her Savior. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have you heard the one about the duck? St. Peter stepped out of the boat, he forgot his raincoat. Slip and sank into a wave, now said <laughs> Jesus says he's walking. <laughs> and then with the divine. Well, he's full of bread and wine, having himself a hell of a time out on the sea.